Jared Poland, Fro knows Photo. Com. I'm here with the Sigma 120 to 300 OS. Is that what they call it? APO EXGG OS with a filter size of 105 millimeters. That thing is huge. So I've already taken it out of the box. I've unzipped it. I actually have the old one here so we can put comparisons together. But I'm going to sniff it. We're going to look at it. Then I'm going to take sample images and come back. I'm going to put it against the old one put up the raw files, I'll probably shoot with the D3S, or maybe I'll shoot with the 70, the D7000. I don't know, I haven't figured it out yet. So let's take this out. Whew. What a smell this one has. So, kind of smells like you just pulled up to the gas station and you put the thing in the car and you're like sniffing the gas fumes. It's kind of like gas fume smell. Anyway, so let's take it out here. Here's the lens. Comes with this bag. Comes with a big lens hood. Not sure if this is the same size as the other one. It is a bigger lens hood than the other one. So let's take it out of the bag. So this is a 120 to 300 2.8. That means it is straight through it's a 2.8 so unlike the 150 to 500s that start out at like f4 and go to 6.3 it's a 2.8 all the way through very interesting lens um 31.99 is what this sells for so compared to about twice that you're looking at about five or six grand for a nikon uh or canon 300 2.8 and used we have a 300 2.8 here let's see Twenty-seven ninety-nine, and that's just a USM. That's not even. That's not even for an IS. So this is the OS version. It has OS on and off, manual focus, autofocus, nice zoom, feels nice and smooth. Ah, still has a good smell to it. Um, I learned on the last collar in the old lens that it was a little shaky when you put it on. I'm not actually going to put this on a tripod because this is a new lens. I'm just going to hand hold it, but. It's interesting. So here's this. I'm gonna put the. That's a huge lens cap. You can really, you can get a filter. They Sigma does make a filter for this. So here's this lens. Let's grab the old one and see if there's a difference in weight. <sighs> yeah. Kind of could do a workout with it. As we see here, let me take off this. You can see the new one is taller, so it's a little bigger. It's probably because it has the image stabilization in there. It is made in Japan is what it says here. So this new lens is a little bigger than the old one. Taller. This doesn't even have the lens hood attached yet, which is right here. So that's about it. Not much else to say right now other than we're going to test it out and see what we think about it, see how the hand holdability works, and see how the image quality works. But really nice. Um, the thing about a 120 to 300 2.8, it's an off-brand. Nikon or Canon don't make a 2.8 that has a zoom range like this. In the past, it's been a little soft out at 300. Um, when you start to get into such a big zoom range, I found that it gets a little soft. And when I tested out the 120 to 300, the old one, out at 300, I wasn't too happy. It wasn't uber duper sharp. Now, that may be the OS, may help with that. We're going to see. but. Hopefully it's better than what it was before because I just want to see sharpness out of this because it's such a big zoom. That's why when you get the 300 fixed, it's so sharp because there's no moving elements. And when you add those moving elements, you start to run into some sharpness issues in this big range. Um, and then for some comparison, here's this 300 2.8 from Canon. More glass, a little bigger, uh, a little heavier, but let's see how it works. So right after this, I'm going to come back with some sample images with the 120 to 300 OS and the 120 to 300 non OS. Now we're outside with the 120 to 300 OS and to get some detail in the photos, the sample photos, well, first I'm putting it on the D7000. Uh, I'm shooting this lock and there's a brick wall and then there's rusted steel and stuff like that. It should be a good representation to let you guys play with these raw files to see what you think of this. So I'm going to do this lens first and then I'm going to do the old 120 to 300 non-IS shooting it exactly the same way and see what we come up with. Um, 
So I believe you've got to be about eight feet away for minimum focus at 300. Uh, so let's try it out. So you, I, I'm going to shoot at 300. I'll shoot through the range, but right now I'm at 300 and I got to back away a little bit, I guess. And it's not recommended to hold the camera the way that I am right now, but here we go. Right now I'm at 300. Shutter speed's at 640th of a second. Not focusing because I need to back up a little bit. There's one. You can feel the, you can see the IS, the, sorry, the OS and feel the OS moving. Um, I'm hand holding and right now I feel that my hand is resting up against the focusing ring also. So you may want to be careful if you have this that you don't hit that ring by accident when you're trying to focus. So let's do one at 120. You can hear, let's see, it clicks off about a second and a half later, the OS clicks off. And then back to 300. Let me stabilize better with my own shooting. Here we go. Back up slightly. There's that. Uh, so let me just double check. Yep, so there we go. That's nice and sharp. Looks pretty good just from looking at it in the camera. Um, now I'm gonna try out the 120 to 300 Sigma the non-OS, and one thing I failed to mention before is that the old one has the f-stops on there. On the outside, you have to put it in or it's gonna read FEE -E on your camera. This one no longer has it, it's all done internally. So when I come back, we're gonna have that lens on this camera doing the same exact thing. Now I put on the 120 to 300 as the bike goes by. Wow, 120 to 300 non-IS, sorry, non-OS optical stabilization. And we're gonna try this out, it's the same thing. I'm gonna shoot one at 300 of the same lock and then at 120 of the same lock. And we'll see later on if the OS is more stable, which it should be, if that image is sharper than this image. Um, so let me just read off the settings real quick. ISO, I put it to 200. Um, it was still reading about a thousandth of a second or eight hundredth of a second. Don't forget this is a 1.5 crop factor. So using the 300 becomes a 450. Uh, so from eight feet away, that's not that bad. So let's get to it. Let's do the one with 300 first, see where I have to focus. Well, it looks like I can focus a little cl from closer in. So it has a closer focusing. I can see the shake in there more so than when I was using the OS. I can see the camera going like this in there and I'm not, well, usually that is going to affect the sharpness. So we're gonna have to take a look in the computer and I'll have these high res files up for you guys to look at. And just looking at the sample images, if I go back one to the old one, it really, I think I can see the difference even looking at it on the back of the camera that the one is sharper than the other. So let's do it at 120. And there you can see that image. I mean, that looks pretty good. Um, really, I'm gonna put up these high-res images for you guys to take a look at. Uh, this is primarily a lens that you're gonna use for sports uh, because you don't wanna spend too much money on a 300 and a 400, or you just wanna have one lens that gives you a nice zoom range that you can run through, say, for baseball, shoot something at 120, and then zoom out and do something at 300, or put on the DX camera and get something really really cool so I don't know why don't I shoot a picture of the camera shooting me and then yeah so that's pretty much that um, in terms of feel the lenses feel exactly the same from the old one to the new one um, the only thing you, you'll notice is the OS and the non OS you could see that going on in the camera. You can hear the click, you can feel it click off when the OS stops working. Uh, it's definitely working because you can hear it and see it, that it stabilizes your shooting. I and mean, this is primarily a lens that you're gonna wanna use on a monopod, uh, especially if you're doing sports because it's gonna be heavy to hold all day and it's just heavy to hold all day. So I'm gonna take some more sample images with the 120 to 300 at different ranges. I'm gonna put that up on the website so you can download the full res images and see what you really think. Uh, but so far, huh, it's, it's, it's hard to say whether I would buy this. I already own a 300 Nikon, but if you're into sports and you're doing a lot of uh, youth sports, 
it could be something that's good, especially with that big range. I mean, it's it's thirty one ninety nine to get a two point eight, a three hundred two point eight like that for that much money. It's not it's not as much as if you were to buy a three hundred two point eight that's going to run you about six thousand dollars for a Nikon or a Canon version for the VRs or the IS. So it's a nice alternative. I'm going to get a test copy of it. I'm going to run it through some different sporting events and then put up all those images to see what you think. But I'm going to end there. I'm not even going to go back inside to make a wrap up, but uh, you know, thank you, Alan, for allowing me to unbox this lens and test it out. And for you guys, if you're interested, take a look, check out the sample images. Let me know what you think. All right. I wanted to interrupt this right before it ended, because this is a photo that I took after I shot outside. Uh, I used the Sigma 120 to 300 OS 2.8 with the Nikon D7000 set to 800 ISO and I shot this photo handheld at 1 100th of a second at f2.8 pretty much at the well at the equivalent of 450 millimeters using this new Sigma with the OS on so that is something that you would not be able to do with really I mean I broke every rule there uh, the rule says that if you're shooting at a 300 millimeter lens or in this case a 450 millimeter lens your shutter speed shouldn't really be below a 500th of a second um, but I was able to handhold here at 100th of a second and it's tack sharp on the eye you can download the full res image of this as well as the other images to see for yourself uh, this is a is a great example of I guess how sharp this lens really is to be able to handhold at a hundredth of a second at the equivalent of 450 millimeters is saying something really good about the lens so you know and also when I looked back at the locks both locks the one with the OS was sharper around the letters and everything like that than the non OS even though we were shooting at 800th to a thousandth of a second uh, so really ch take a look at the high-res images you can download them but I wanted to show you this this image is not cropped this is full frame really hard to handhold and get his whole head in there without cutting an ear or any hair off but it's tack sharp right on the eye at a hundredth of a second with the eye sorry with the OS on in this Sigma 70 to, wow in the Sigma 120 to 300 2.8 OS um, so that's about it and I am going to wrap it up right after this and Jared Poland fro knows photo.com see ya